Hello, and welcome to a Song of Ice and Fire battle report. This is round two of the Belcompton Remembers event held in Canberra in March, and in this game we're playing Mag the Mighty against Victarion in a custom scenario. Let's jump forward to post tonk deployment, and I'll run you through everything that's happened. So, this might look a lot like Game of Thrones, but the scenario we're playing is actually called the Iron Price. It's a custom scenario developed for Canberra events. I can put a link to it in the comments or in the description. Um, it sets up exactly like a Game of Thrones, but it plays very, very differently. Um, so, although you have the four objectives, um, so, so five objectives, one, two, three, four, five, and they have missions on them like in a Game of Thrones, and you control them like in a Game of Thrones, uh, you do not score points from the end of each round. Instead, you basically are looking to pillage and move on. So at the end of rounds two, four, and six, each player can select one objective they are controlling and remove it from the field, scoring three points. So for example, if you have an objective with the mission that says when you score points from this objective, heal a unit within long range, um, that, is the, that is how you trigger that scoring ability, and also score your three points. So over the course of six turns, you can score nine points if you score on rounds two, four, and six. And generally speaking, in playtesting, we've played this a lot now, what we've found is that it's very easy to score in turn two, but things begin, begin to get pretty hectic in turn four and very hectic in turn six because movement happens across the field. One of the really interesting things about how the scenario plays out is because you're pillaging and moving on, when you remove an objective... So in, in um, a Game of Thrones, a unit sitting on an objective would be sitting there for the entire game. Um, and if there's nothing happening near them, they are passive. They're just passive in scoring. But in the Iron Price, when you score the objective, you destroy it, and now this unit is free to move and contribute to the battle. So that leads to some very interesting shifts of force. Uh, ultimately, is a scenario where you fight a lot. Generally, it's not necessarily determined by um, like annihilation victory, but you, it really forces the players to fight. And you have interesting like pauses for breath, where there's this gear up towards round two, round four, round six, and the clash to secure objectives. So I'm playing Mag the Mighty in this list, and this is, I'll be blunt, this is not a particularly good Mag the Mighty list. There are a few things that I wanted to test, and I did get to test them. But they aren't necessarily what I would play. Uh, there are also some issues with this deployment, but we'll kind of get to that. In terms of terrain, we have a forest, a corpse pile, a palisade, and a, a set of stakes. So I've deployed the forest. I love forests with giants, particularly Mag the Mighty. Had he been over there, would love a forest because he doesn't care about the fortified terrain, but he loves not being seen by bows, and he loves fortified for being charged. Um, and also, all of my little solos love sort of hiding in forests. So forest, one of my favorite terrain pieces for actually free folk in general. My opponents put down the corpse pile because he has a bunch of terror cores and crap, and I'm playing free folk. Um, and then I've put down some stakes here. Uh, the stakes are really just to make one side of the table kind of toxic. I like to always have it be. A I like it if my opponent wins the roll for it to be a difficult choice for them whether they want to choose turn order or choose table sides. So I usually put something down somewhere that makes one table side a little bit of a shit. And then we have a palisade here that my opponent has put in place to kind of like divide the table. He has spread his army out quite widely, um, and let's sort of let's, let's break down what's going on here. So this is a this is a four three split Greyjoy list, and it's led by Victarion. My opponent had two uh, two lists. He had a Roos, I think it was Roos Bolton, but it was a super morale centric, um, like tons and tons and tons of re Reapers. Lots of morale shenanigans and stuff. And actually, frankly, his second list is as well, with the newly buffed Reapers. So he's got, um, over here, he's got Eric... Wendemir and Beren, which is basically if you are only going to put three NCUs in a Greyjoy list, those are usually like those are the three staples. Super, super on meta. Every now and again, you might not include Eric, but like frankly, let's be real, you probably would. So very, very meta choice. Beren, Beren Black Tide is probably one of the best five point NCUs in the entire game. Wendemir is one of the two best four point NCUs in the entire game. Um, and then we have uh, we have Eric as like sort of a, a staple, even with his recent kind of uncalled for nerf. Then we have, over here, we have Victarion in a unit of Reapers. This is Victarion Commander. We have Asher One Point Attachment in a unit of Iron Makers. And we have Brawn in a unit of Bowmen. And then, I actually have done a battle report already where I said something like, I am scared of the day that Greyjoy players remember that they have Reaver Captains. And so here we have Reapers with Newt the Barber and a Reaver Captain. And yeah, sure enough, uh, fuck. Because <laughs> this, is, this is horrifying. 
If my list was like the Varamir list, I could spread out way, way, way wider. But I don't actually... One, I don't know if Varamir plays super well in this scenario. And two, I needed to not just play Varamir all three games. Like, just, just to have a shred of personal dignity, I needed to not play that absolutely disgusting list three times in a row. I wanted to test Magan, so this is what we've got. On our side, we've got a unit of raiders with a raid leader. Uh, Varamir, you can see his, his uh, cat has appeared back here. Varamir, his cat, and his wolves. We have Brawn in a unit of raiders with his boar, mag, and 1-1. One, one. So this is a lot less big monsters than you would classically see in a Magda Mighty list. You would usually expect probably at least another Savage Giant. But I played one game with him doing that kind of a list, and what I found was you rapidly exceed the ability to support and heal a third giant. Um, really what that third giant, that savage giant, is for is to just give you a trigger of last of their kind. And I don't know if that's worth seven points. Mag and 1-1 one, one are excellent. They're both incredible for their cost. I mean, especially Mag, obviously. He's five points as his commander. But I wanted to see what would happen if I just took them. And if I just took them, how do I make up the numbers of monsters? Because you need monsters for certain cards. And Varamir is a really obvious choice, and if you've got Varamir, may as well take his wolves. This is enough monsters by itself to kind of get you up to a full bottle last of their kind. But I had seven points. So I put this in. Barok, the skin changer, in unit of raiders with his boar. This is a little janky. It's not the only janky thing about the list. Um, but I wanted to give it a shot and just see how it went. I've had fun with them in the past, and they can do a thing where basically, like, they can sit in a space on the table. Like, you can have, like, Barok here, not on the stakes, obviously. And he can kind of influence a lot of space around him because he's got his traps and he's got his boar that leashes out in that kind of space. Which is, like, is pretty cool. It's been fun. It hasn't always been worth five points. But the thing about Mag is that his tactics deck is very mediocre. But because he is so cheap as the commander, you just kind of have more material than your opponent. And so I wanted to see, hey, does having more deployments, another unit, none of it's worth VPs, um, does this do something good? And then I have a unit of raiders because I like raiders. I wanted to just try more infantry. I actually quite like this. I also think it could be definitely could be trappers. Um, and I think that would have been totally fine as well. The NCU choice is a little bit questionable. I've taken two NCUs. I've taken Craster and I've taken Igreet. Now... Val, classically, is an NCU that you take with Mag. Mag has two cards in his deck that replace actions with effects. He has Shrug It Off and Hurl Boulder. And because your Greet can turn any zone into a maneuver, which is an action, you can then turn those actions into Hurl Boulder or Shrug It Off. What I've kind of found in playing him a little bit is that I didn't necessarily need her to do that. I could sometimes do it by myself anyway, kind of like a little bit often. And so I want to just see, could I make this list work with two NCUs and without Val? I went with I went with Craster because you 100% always, always, always play Craster with the Giants. I went with Ygritte because there are a few pieces here that would benefit from her a lot. Varamir loves the extra speed, the Wolves love the extra speed, and denying speed to your opponent, particularly when you have traps, to double tap on that, is kind of interesting and relevant. Um, I think you should probably play three NCUs with this list. And realistically, right, I spoke in my last battle report about why I don't run three NCUs in most free folk lists, because what are you going to force multiply? This is what you're going to force multiply. You have 1-1 one, one, and you have Mag the Mighty in this list. You have the two most expensive single pieces in the game at nine and eight points, respectively. Right, because Mag, make Mona Spake, Mag, Mag is worth nine points. You have pieces to force multiply. Take the three NCUs. Uh, I also often, if I'm going to have Val on a list, I like having her as part of a two NCU lineup because she so often wants to activate like as the ninth thing or the eighth thing, and there's never space on the NCU board unless you've taken an NCU and then flipped it and done nothing with it. So Val like crowds out your your desire for a third NCU. Um, but because in this case you're often using Val early in the turn to play those cards, that that's not an issue. So yeah, I think realistically. Three NCUs in Mag the Mighty, probably Val, but let's see how it went. So, um, I've taken first turn, uh, and I've taken first turn because I wanted to see where these guys were going to go. I wanted them either to not appear or appear in a controllable position, because if they appear like behind me, that's nightmarish. And they can't do that if I'm going first. There's physically not space here, and there's actually also not space here without being on the stakes. So if they appear, I know that they're going to appear somewhere like this, and it's it's basically it's going to mitigate the risk. And sure enough, my opponent does bring them on, and I respond by bringing the Shadow Cat on over here. 
So this is how things look at the beginning of round one. And as a little bit of a prelude, um, oh, also a note about deployment. One of the big things about the Giants list is your ability to concentrate force in one place. Um, Varamir and so 1-1 one, 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 one Mag, Varamir, like all of these pieces are physically small, but they can put a lot of power in a small location. I think you often want to have the Giants even closer than that, but I've gone with them deployed like this just because this Palisade is going to, like, nothing else can go really here anyway, and Varamir can split himself up. So normally I want to forcibly run them a little bit closer together. In this case I didn't, there's a reason why, but I think that's something you want to pay attention to. So, as a prelude to a misplay, I have kind of forgotten what Victarion does. Um, the, gate, the day is moving at a cracking pace, so I'm not inclined to like slow things down. Had a great first game, uh, one-sided but great. Had a great lunch, just had a coffee. We're kicking on, and I make the deeply mentally unwise decision to just go... I'll just remember what Baron. What, I'll remember what um, what Victorian does as we play. I won't ask what he does. I won't ask what his cards are. What's his ability? Oh yeah, he's got he's got he makes you vulnerable when he charges. And like one other thing, I forget. I'll remember. So that's the situation at the beginning of turn one. The situation at the end of turn one is oh fuck, oh fuck, oh shit, oh shit, I fucked up. Here's how that looks. So this is the end of round one. And uh, melee has happened. Things have gone. Things have gone kind of bad. I've claimed the horse. I've moved one one forward. Uh, one one will eventually just march onto this objective. This objective is a really tasty one. It's the if you control it, increase your hand size. And because it's control, not score, it's very live in the scenario. Um, Asher has moved kind of tentatively forward. These guys have moved tentatively forward just to sort of like G up for a charge. The Raiders have moved to kind of block them a little bit, but really not give them much space. The Wolves have run around. The Cat has come into the rear and disorderly charged and rolled two misses, but that's fine. It's engaging the Bowman. And here is where the mistake happened. In fact, here is where multiple mistakes happened. So the first mistake was... I don't, what, what is, I don't care what Victorian does. It'll be fine. Um, so Barak and his boys moved forward. And then the boar used its cavalry maneuver to destroy the stakes. That's mistake number one, because what does Victarion do? Victarion has a card that lets him charge six inches. So he's marched forward, and then he's shifted forward with Wendemere. And there's an NCU left on the table, because, you know, this is one of the problems with running two NC problems, quote-unquote, is that you don't congest the tactics board early. Because the board is uncongested, he can leave... Uh, he's got plenty of activations. He's got seven activations here. He can leave, he can leave an NCU until a bit later. So I faff around with this, destroy the stakes, and then my opponent, with these units both activated, and even actually uh, Varamir activated, and Mag activated, like most things activated, I've gone first. I have like some stuff left to do, but not really much. I have like Craster unactivated at this point. And my opponent takes his own, plays Assault Orders, and with Victarion like here, like 10 inch march, 3 inch Wendemere shift, with Victarion 11 inches away from Barok, he declares a rush of aggression, he declares a char assault orders, which is a charge when played on um, Victarion, and then plays rush of aggression for an 11 inch charge. Now, this is the, so the first misplay I made, and it's a big misplay, is just not remembering what Victarion does. Just like, I'll figure it out. That's a stupid thing to do. Stop, think, remember, what does your opponent actually do with their list? The second stupid thing is, this is Barok's unit. What ability does Barok have? He has traps. Good news, I remember the traps. And I use the traps to deal three wounds to Victarion's unit. Do traps have two modes? Yeah, they do, Rob. Congratulations. What's the second mode? The second mode reduces your opponent's speed by one. What was that charge Victarion was making? It was an 11-inch charge. What happens to that 11-inch charge if your opponent has minus one speed? It fails. Womp womp. So huge misplay. Uh, I am not used to using traps. I don't use them nearly enough. This is going to stick in the brain. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. Uh, because and how the declaration would have gone is he would have activated. He would have declared a charge. In response to declaring a charge, he plays his triggers, which is his card, and I play traps. And then he runs forward ten inches, takes a panic check, and sits there. Instead, he makes it into melee. He does it. Frankly, he rolls badly, and I only take five wounds, but he's going first next turn. And so his turn begins, and he takes the swords, finishes them off, and overruns into the boar. We'll leave that there for now and jump forward to the end of the round. 
So here's the end of round two, beginning of round three. And some things have gone well for me, but some things have gone terribly. Firstly, as Victarion has done his dirty business here, he's wiped out uh, Barrock's unit, he's wiped out the boar, um, and he's moved around to here, but he hasn't quite been able to commit. Um, I've been able to use a degree of movement and an activation, of, like I've still got a little bit of activation advantage, and Varamir was able to whoop around here. I actually took the horses to get out of the way to get into their, um, into their flank so that even with a Wendemir shift, they couldn't quite get onto me. Um, and then I eventually just ran him onto this objective. So Varamir is going to be, Varamir is basically going to be objective hunting the entire game, but he is presenting some threat and he's on an objective. Over here, Newt's unit charged in, jobbed them, and they actually retreated. They retreated because I just, I want this fight to take as long as possible. I considered having the wolves come into the rear of, um, of Newt's unit, <clears throat> take some gang up fights, etc, etc. But this list is Magda Mighty. This is not a regular Free Folk list where I have all of the things I need to force multiply that into a win. In addition, this is Newt the Barber's unit. They can motivate it by coin. I just need to get out of melee. I need to get out of melee before my opponent played. Um, I either took the bags and made an attack. Right, because re Reapers, Reapers will shred Raiders. They are vicious. They are and they're vicious and they do extra panic damage. They're just they're just a nightmare for Raiders. Um, so he's going to take off the bags if I let him. He's going to... Um, play, uh, we do not sow if I let him, he's got three NCUs, tons is coming out of the tactics board, I have to just not give him that. What has gone really well is, oh, and the giants are just being thoroughly neutralized, but only kind of thoroughly. 1-1 one, one has moved up to here, um, and he's just sort of picking up condition tokens, screaming at things, but he has yeeted a boulder and done six wounds worth of damage on Asher, that's super nice. Uh, he did that through Baron, because Boulder can do that, and then Mag has just run in this direction. Mag wants none of this crap right now. Mag is the natural predator of the Iron Makers, and he wants to kill them. I am really not doing anything with these two units just yet. I'm hoping that they will carry the late game, and it is all of my light elements that are, like, taking the casualties. Barak and his boys are dead. These raiders are not going to last terribly much longer. But over here, Varamir's beasts are tearing this poor Bowman unit apart. Um, I've bought the wolves in in the flank, which has turned off bronze ability, and I'm just like dunking them down, nickel and dime, nickel and dime, nickel and dime, nickel and dime, and the important thing is that they are sitting on an objective at the end of round two, but they have two ranks and they're engaged by these wolves who have three wounds, which disrupts my opponent's turn, my opponent's control of the objective on one of the scor scoring turns in the scenario. So at the end of the round two, Varamir scored this objective, but my opponent... His plan was to score this, and he couldn't. So I've just picked up three VPs. Now, I'm losing pieces left, right, and center otherwise, but the race is now on. I am very worried about overall attrition here, but uh, like I'm expecting these to die, and then I'm expecting maybe Varamir to die if he doesn't run this direction, and it's going to be the giants facing threats from all sides, but I am hoping to get ahead enough on VPs and not die. So this is how things looked at the beginning of turn three, and one of the important things that's happened is that I've finally drawn one of the good tactics cards in the list, which is Monsters from the North, and I've put a panic token onto them. So, fast forward. Here's how things look. End of turn three, beginning of turn four. 1-1 one, one is being collapsed in on, on all sides. The Raiders are dead, totally unsurprisingly. Varamir has just made the run here as far as possible. Um, he will eventually jump onto this objective, but his goal is to just not die. Uh, so I'm losing resources left, right, and center, and 1-1 one, one is time to tank the world. Varamir, um, Mag the Mighty has moved into Ash's unit, but really not done that much damage. We have not yet even triggered a We Do Not Sow. But the Raider, the uh, Bowmen are dead, and the Bowmen have died to a... Um, they did damage to them, damage to them, damage to them. I think I did... Like, he healed them a bunch. I think I did four wounds with monsters from the north. Um, and then eventually finished them off with the wolves. So that's freed up Varamir's beasts to now come and contribute to this part of the battle. Although, frankly, I wouldn't be remiss literally just running a shadow cat back to the board at this point. Because I need to just not die. Um, but um, they're free. This fight's happening here. I will probably eventually win this. But literally, like, all that Mag is really going to kill... Uh, the way things are looking right now is Asher's unit, and my opponent is happy with that. They've held him up, they're morale 5, they'll be okay, and 1-1 one, one is being collapsed on. Now, 1-1 one, one took a uh, charge from Victarion and a charge from Newt, and although there are no wounds, like there's one wound visible on him right now, through all of that he took three wounds, and I've immediately popped Craster to heal him back. So that's the beginning of what is going to be a heal and stab cascade. Um, 
the remainder of this turn, just to foreshadow now, yep, there's going to be a bunch of fighting, a bunch of things will, will, a bunch of things will fight, a bunch of things will die. This is, remember, this is round four, so we're in another scoring window here. Mag is going, one one is going to get absolutely jobbed, but here's how things look at the end of round four, beginning of round five. One one is alive. So is Ash's unit. Um, we've we've done enough damage to her to trigger um, uh, What Is Dead May Never Die. I didn't have the walls in place to stop that. They had more important things to do. Uh, but Mag, Mag has just fought back and forth with them forever. He's fine. I think he's taken no wounds even. They're going to die eventually. And this fine here has happened. Over the course of this turn, I have healed like 10 wounds on 1-1. One, one. Um, because he has just gotten like smashed to absolute bits. Um, I turn five. Uh, I was going. I was no. My opponent was going first. So we've got these guys slammed into him, and then I took the bags with Recruit, and then they attacked him, and I took his own with Craster, and then they attacked him again, and then I activated him and you shrugged off to heal. So over the course of this turn and last, I have healed ten wounds. Uh, he is very badly wounded. You can't see it, but there's like. Something like, I think there was three wounds on him when the when he, like, basically he did nothing this turn other than heal himself. Um, he may have taken, like, I, mean, I think I took a swing into these guys or something. Something happened, but anyway. Um, he has been very badly wounded, but he's on three wounds. So if we remember that, like, Newt's unit was in basically good shape. They took a little bit of damage. It was something like they took three damage, I think maybe from 1-1 one, one swords. Uh, no, something, something hit them. Um... Something had wounded them. Actually, a monster's from the north. That's right. So, panic token, monsters from the north did three wounds. I was hoping for four. Um, it was a, a plus two damage. The wolf was not nearby at that stage. Um, the cat has died to them. Uh, it was a plus two damage monsters from the north. They did fail the panic check. There's a corpse pile there after all. It only did three wounds. My opponent rolled a one um, for the check, and I didn't have panic on them at the time. So, they've been jobbing one one back and forth. And the wolves had to make the call. The wolves could have gone into these guys. And wolves are fantastic at, at dealing with Iron Makers because they turn off the Iron Maker defensive abilities. They turn off the ability to play what is dead. Um, they will do a bunch of damage. Like the Iron Makers have got five plus saves against them. Um, but instead, I went into the rear of Newt's unit because once again, the wolves have three wounds. And I needed to do exactly one wound with this charge in order to stop them from controlling the objective on this pivotal turn. Um, I played Relentless, uh, so whatever the whatever the reroll charges become vulnerable is, crap card like Mag's whole deck, um, Disorderlead, uh, made it in, uh, Disorderlead, rerolled, made it in, uh, hit everything anyway, and actually did like three wounds and then another three on the panic check. So the wolves have like busted this guy up, but the important thing is that they did at least one damage, which put this unit down to less than three ranks. So once again, my opponent has not scored. And Varimir is sitting over here, and he has scored. So I'm now on, what have I killed? I've only killed one of my opponent's units. And we are really running out of stuff. But I'm on seven points to my opponents. At this juncture, nil. Um, it's now turn five. And really, my goal at this juncture is just survive. I'm actually going to try and kill my opponent if I can. But 1-1 one, one is shredding wounds. I'm not going to last forever. Let's jump forward and see how things look. So this is uh, end of round five, beginning of turn six, and the functional end of the game, um, where basically bruh, explosions have happened. Um, my modus operandi with this list is that I will usually discard the first copy of Last of Their Kind that I draw, because I only have two giants. You can never play it twice. Uh, and I have literally gone through my entire rest of my deck, discarding like multiple cards every single turn, drawing chief like chieftain's orders, etc., to find the second copy. And I found it just in time. Um, so over here, this fight one one has finally been broken. He actually went from three health to dead with um, with Newt the Barber's unit uh, or Victarian's unit. Um, I think Victarian's unit killing, um, which let one one pay ma mag play master of his kind, destroy um, destroy the. Uh, um, Ray Ironborn, uh, and come back this way. 1-1 one, one did kill off Newt's unit, that's right. So 1-1 one, one took the swords, killed Newt's unit, Victarion killed 1-1, one, one. Mag killed Asher, so all in the same turn. Uh, well, basically, like, um, within the space of two activations, uh, Newt's unit dies to 1-1, one, one. Victarion kills 1-1, Victarian kills one, one. Mag kills Asher, moves to here, and Victarion moves to here. So Victarion and 1-1 uh, one, one are now facing each other off, and I actually just I, I just retreat. I just I just I just leave this fight. Um, I've I've 
ticked up enough points. My opponent sort of like, he's out of the game at this point. Really, his only way to win is to literally kill my entire army. Um, and I'm, I actually think I do. No, I go for the, I go for the tabling. The right play, realistically, the right play is just, just split. Just everyone get away. Um, there's no point taking this fight. It's not what's needed to win the game. I will win at the end of the turn. I just have more VPs. He can have, he can have this central objective and it's not going to be enough to win him the game. But we go for the big fight. My opponent knows he's lost, so we just have a big old clash. And um, sure enough, Victarion charges in, uh, takes a big swing, and then basically there is a three-way, a four-way brawl between Mag, the Wolves, and Varamir. And between them, I think Mag gets dinged up a little bit, but Victarion dies. So that's technically a win by tabling, and it's a win by tabling on turn six. Um, but this was a very close, very hard-fought game. Uh, very stupid play by me on the first turn. Letting this breakthrough happen, I could have just left those stakes there. <laughs> like, literally, I could have just left those stakes there. Good good work. Um, or I could have remembered how traps work. I, I basically was kind of fortunate that everything else, particularly this fight here, went basically as I, as I hoped it would. Um, Newt the Barber in Reapers with... Reapers I actually really like in this. This list I really like, the Greyjoy one, because it's got sustain through the Reapers. It's got like panic threat. The Reapers are fragile, but they're fragile with sustain. And Newt the Barber, Victarion, you've got so many ways to attack with them over and over and over and over and over um, that you really just need Asher as the pinning unit, support for the archers. Oh, look, more ways to attack. And then just the threat from Victarion is phenomenal. Um, my opponent had a pretty good run out in terms of cards, I think, but really like what? He drew He drew the six inch charge in the, in the opening hand. Um, so, like, that happens 44% of the time. I think he actually even took the letters. So in his first five cards, it's hugely likely. Um, so he played this really well. This breakthrough, the overrun, the wraparound, right? Having pieces here and here so early in the game really could have... And I think, like, a, a, a list that wasn't, like, with this much stuff, um, he nearly broke through as well. Like, 1-1 one, one nearly died multiple times. If the kill on 1-1 one, one had happened, I think my overall plan of fucking bail and let my opponent take one more objective is probably still a goer but the game is looking much more difficult so overall a tabling um but a tabling of my opponent only through sort of like the slimmest of margins we have really just a few things left this is technically speaking 11 points worth of stuff left on the table um and and like fair enough so hope you enjoyed this and we're going to run now into round three <laughs>